I'm a crush it. Hi, welcome to Unsung, Pittsburgh's nonprofit news magazine show. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. We're coming to you from this location because our main feature is a Steelers legend. A tireless advocate for veteran causes, Rocky Blyer, joins us today as we wrap up our veteran series with a story about how desperately wounded soldiers may have a chance at a normal life through developments in regenerative medicine that is being pioneered right here in the Berg. And if that does not have you feeling patriotic and loving your city, then Josh Franzos helps Unsung welcome back our iconic fountain. But first, as always, let's take a look at what's happening with our area nonprofits. The Flame of Hope was carried by more than 35 law enforcement teams from Pittsburgh to State College during the Be a Fan three day 150 mile torch run for Special Olympics from June 4th to 6th, 2013. Presented by UPMC, the run officially kicked off at PNC Park at 8.30 a.m. as law enforcement representatives from around the region and other dignitaries celebrated the beginning of the long and inspiring journey with the lighting of the torch at home plate. It ended with the lighting of the cauldron during opening ceremonies at Penn State University's Medler Field on Thursday evening to celebrate and commence the 44th annual Summer Games. Giving USA 2013, an annual in-depth profile on charitable giving, was released this week. Overall, it found that charitable giving increased by 3.5% in 2012, which equals a combined giving of $316.23 billion by individuals, corporations, and foundations. There's a new nonprofit in town, and Unsung was there for the announcement and the story on how there is hope for our wounded veterans. We had the good fortune of being able to go through the McGowan Institute, and for those who have not uh, been able to do that, um, to some degree, it's a it's a it's a it's a magical place uh, in what they have done in um, tissue uh, engineering. Um, in what we call now regenerative medicine. Um, and being able to use cell tissues to put back together body parts that had been terribly damaged from burns to uh, lost limbs, um, to be able to uh, get feeling back um, into, uh, a, 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 into, into the nervous system um, with a prosthetic and have that feeling of, of, of great sensation. They don't have to live with the atrocity that had taken place um, in, their, in their injury. So they have a whole, new, a whole new outlook on life. The whole idea was to be able to, one, advance the research. Secondly, to give it the proper uh, identification that it needs, to give it, give it a face, give it a name, uh, that people become aware of, of, of what has taken place. And so, um, Heroes Restoration was created uh, to be able to do that. The, the interesting thing about our returning veterans, just in general, over the last 20 years, is that we as American citizens have supported our soldiers from the Gulf War all the way now through uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. But we don't go home with them. We don't live their lives. And as much as we may feel good about ourselves in saying, hey, you did a wonderful job, um, we don't live the everyday atrocity that takes place and what they have to go through. As they look at themselves in the mirror or question themselves about, am I really fully human? Uh, how, do I, how, do, how do I go through life with no limbs and or no arms or missing this or missing that? And, um, and all of a sudden, uh, regenerative medicine, what the McGowan Institute has researched and done, uh, puts a whole new light on how I view myself, how I, I can operate, and how I can interact with my kids and my family and get a job and have some normalcy within my life that I didn't think I was gonna have. And so that's what it does. That's the impact um, to make an individual feel like a human. In, in the funding world, research is almost like the stepchild. It's the one that gets whatever's left over. Research is a long process. It may not get the fanfare uh, and all the publicity that other charities may have um, because it 
may go down uh, and run into a dead end. You know, all the years of money for that research may not uh, have f uh, fruition, but yet it may have started a path somewhere else, and then somewhere else, and somewhere else, so that down the line, in a generation or, or two, uh, all of a sudden we see the benefits of the research that is taking place now. Um, that's why we need your help. And that's why we need you to give, because it starts building a foundation for future people. And who knows that one day, that miracle of being able to put a new hand on, uh, or new fingers, or a new leg, or a new foot, um, can change a person's life like that. You know, one of the things in the history of war <laughs> is that the battlefield has always been a test ground. Uh, for advancement in medicine. All the way back from every war, from the Civil War to uh, First World War, Second World War, look at where medicine has come um, based on the sacrifice of our, of our young soldiers um, and who had to be treated immediately. But if it wasn't for the research, if it wasn't for the hands-on work that was able to done, be done, we wouldn't be where we are today in our knowledge of medicine and specifically in the fact of regenerative medicine, in tissue engineering, um, specific minute things that have come out of a bad conflict, but has given us the hope to be able to take to um, everyday lives, accidents that happen, and not necessarily combat that benefits us as a generation, benefits us um, as a people. If you can, Please consider supporting Heroes Restoration today. Channeling my best Bob Ross here, but what this painting needs is a happy little fountain. There, now it's done. We are all here to celebrate the rebirth of Point State Park with the dedication of Pittsburgh's most famous symbol. Twenty years ago, when I first arrived in Pittsburgh, I heard people talking then about how we really needed to find what's called a first day attraction in Pittsburgh. You know, we had to find some place that people would want to visit first and that would define our community. So one of the things that I think we've discovered through the process of rediscovering Point State Park and the fountain is that we had that attraction. It's the extraordinary vista behind me right now. It's an extraordinary asset, and what it tells us about Pittsburgh is that the future of this town is now defined along its riverfronts, and who sees its future and its economic potential tied directly to its extraordinary natural and environmental assets. for Point State Park was and is a simple, unified, uncluttered park of monumental sweep designed to feature the hills and valleys and westward flow of the rivers as a timeless and majestic memorial. It's been the home to battles, to the factories of the 19th and 20th century, to festivals of art and music, and thank you it's not raining, to the finish line for marathons. At this point, is Pittsburgh. It is the heart of Pittsburgh. This riverfront park is connected to the system of riverfront trails that go up and down all three of our rivers, connecting vast reaches into our region. And this is the symbol of it, the hub of it, the point of it. This is a significant investment from the Commonwealth and our partners in recognizing the importance of our natural resources. It's a remarkable rejuvenation. And I think when we look at it, it's really the people that did it. And they did it by working together. 
There is a spirit that happens in Pittsburgh that does not happen anywhere else in the country, and you're seeing the result today, and we're all privileged to be a part of it. Assistant conductor Fozzie Heimer will lead the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra in an exciting free concert at the South Park Amphitheater as part of the 2013 Allegheny County Summer Concert Series. On Saturday, July 6th at 8 p.m., the show will feature many American classics in celebration of Independence Day. Bricolage Production Company announced a new season of Midnight Radio Jr. opening July 27th. This season will feature two brand new episodes, Underwater Voyage and Mad Science Laboratory. Themes chosen by audience members with special musical guests, The Josh and Gab Show. Information is available at webbricolage.org. The sixth annual golf for the Paul Fundraiser at Edgewood Country Club in Penn Hills, Pennsylvania. Funds raised at the golf outing help support DePaul's listening and spoken language programs. Details for the event are available at speakmiracles.org slash golf.html. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. As always, thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. And as a reminder, we're also on iTunes. The video version has been there for a while, but now if you have to go, you can take the audio with you. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why and you might find yourself here on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy, cause it shine whenever I touch it. Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally. Actually, the whole hood after me. Masterpiece, I outran a pace car. Any